What's going on guys, it's Cohen with Trade Athletics. Today I want to take a little bit of time to talk through why I don't love conventional deadlifts for pitchers and my favorite alternative. The reality is we need to understand how the exercise we're doing in the weight room apply to our specific skill on the field. So in this case, pitching or throwing. And with conventional deadlifts, while they're one of the easier teaches, they're also one of the most butchered exercises in my experience. Whether that's improper cueing or ego lifting, both those things among others lend themselves to a higher injury risk. But what if we had an exercise variation or a deadlifting variation that limited some of those negative factors, if not all of them, but then also added some skill specific development uh, to our routine. And that's where snatch grip deadlifts come in for me. So stay tuned as we compare and contrast conventional deadlifts and snatch grip deadlifts, and also review the technique of the latter. So here are the main reasons why I don't love the conventional deadlifts for pitchers. The first one being the fail point, the second being shoulder position, the third being lat dominance, the fourth being too much overload, the fifth being grip fatigue, and the last one being a lack of skill or sport specific development. So with that first one being the fail point, it's really important to understand that during conventional deadlift, you're gonna fail through your lumbar spine primarily, and during a snatch grip deadlift, you actually fail through the thoracic spine. So what I mean by that is essentially, during a conventional deadlift, you get up mid shin, or you get up uh, above the knee, and when you fail, it actually goes through the lumbar spine. And the reason that's really important is to understand that the lumbar spine is not nearly as mobile or as uh, prepared to readily accept uh, flexion, and so that's where a lot of the injuries are actually going to occur. But during a snatch grip deadlift, we have the thoracic spine. The reason that's important is that essentially, if the thoracic spine fails, uh, it's one, more mobile, and two, uh, traditionally in a snatch grip deadlift, you're actually not gonna be able to get the weight off the ground if your thoracic spine can't handle uh, that isometric stress. So again, the fail point uh, is really important. It's probably the most important point is that essentially where you're gonna dissipate stress during a failed repetition or typically when injury is gonna occur is actually going to be in the thoracic spine versus the lumbar spine in a more conventional deadlift. So uh, that's particularly important. Next point is gonna be shoulder position. So in a conventional deadlift, we're gonna have internally rotated shoulders, whereas during a snatch grip deadlift, we're gonna have abducted shoulders. So it's again important because we're gonna essentially be screwed in forward, and when we screw in forward, we're actually gonna be putting ourselves in an internally rotated, pronated position, and a lot of times what you'll see uh, is guys will actually uh, incur some shear on the front of their shoulder, especially as they progress uh, the overload stimulus. And the reason being, and a big part of this, is that their hips are actually not as wide as their shoulders. So essentially when you put your hands, uh, you put your hands next to your legs, you're actually going to put yourself in an internally torqued position, which can put a lot of shear on the front of the shoulder. But if you actually do a snatch grip deadlift, your hands are much wider. And when your hands are much wider, you're essentially clearing out the anterior portion of the shoulder and you're working on uh, that abduction strength and essentially screwing those scapula in. And what that's gonna do is prevent some of that shear. So again, shoulder position is particularly important. And again, another reason why I like the snatch grip over the conventional deadlift. So moving into the lat dominance portion, it's really important to understand that during a conventional deadlift, we're gonna be highlighting the extensor chain, so essentially the lats plus the erectors, whereas in a snatch grip deadlift, we're gonna have a lot more emphasis on retraction and downward rotation of the scapula. And so why, the reason that's really important is that the extensor chain, while we do wanna train our lats, we do wanna train our erectors, it's very important that we understand we also wanna train you know, low trap, rhomboids, uh, the thoracolumbar fascia, so essentially where the lats uh, integrate in to the thoracic spine, so T7 through T12, uh, and that's particularly important. And then we don't throw in an, only an extension and flexion position. We do have a rotational component, so I like training the lats uh, in a little bit more of that, uh, the vector that's gonna support the rotational component rather than the vector that's gonna support a very short, uh, overextended posture and ultimately gonna influence the extension component of the throw and the rotation component. So that separation component, that's particularly important that a lot of guys really struggle with. So again, lat dominance for me, I don't love that with a conventional deadlift and what it kind of biases. Whereas in the snatch grip, we're gonna be in a little bit better position to kind of screw in our scapula and really train those muscles and make sure that those are the limiting factors that are being trained during the exercise. So moving into my next point, we're gonna be talking about too much overload. It's particularly important to understand there's a strength threshold at which strength gains in the weight room are not gonna necessarily facilitate velocity gains on the field. Conventional deadlifts are set up for powerlifters to maximize their strength output, uh, whereas that strength output is actually far exceeds that strength threshold required to maximize your velocity potential. That's where snatch grip deadlifts come in for me as more applicable strength because essentially uh, we're gonna be able to uh, naturally limit how much weight we're moving because the variation is actually more difficult. We're gonna be able to train uh, the fibers in a little bit different vector that are potentially uh, more applicable to our throwing mechanics. 
And then on top of that, we're gonna lower our risk. So we're gonna lower our injury risk as long as all else is held equal. So as long as we're queuing correctly, maintaining correct form, we're actually gonna be using uh, less weight and potentially gonna be at a lower risk uh, for injury there. So that's really where the too much overload component comes in for me and really why I like the snatch grip over the conventional as far as the loading component. This leads me to my next point, which is gonna be grip fatigue. I actually didn't write anything up here for a reason, and that's because all is equal to the conventional versus the snatch grip variations. The grip fatigue is gonna be similar. Uh, so during a conventional deadlift, we're gonna challenge the overload component more, but the hands less, and then the flip of that, we're gonna challenge our hands more in the snatch grip, uh, but challenge the overload component less. But this is really where I kind of give a slight edge to the snatch grip, is that I actually suggest using straps. The biggest reason being that because we're abducted uh, with our uh, shoulders, and then our fail point is the thoracic spine, I feel a lot more comfortable overloading and overriding that first uh, fail point, which is actually going to be the grip strength. Uh, but then you move into a conventional deadlift where the fail point is gonna be the shoulders and then it's gonna be the lumbar spine. I really don't like uh, overloading that uh, past uh, what we can actually move without straps. The biggest reason being that if our shoulders fall into an internally rotated position, we're gonna get anterior shear, and then the next level of failure is gonna be the lumbar spine. And again, uh, as we mentioned in the fail point section, we really don't want that to happen. So that's why I give a slight edge to the snatch grip. I do wanna mention that uh, if you are doing deadlift variations when you're in high intensity throwing, whether that's in season or in the off season during testing phases, I would recommend lowering the intensity and the volume and doing more speed reps or like VBT, so velocity based training uh, with your deadlifts. So that being mentioned, we're gonna move into our final point, which is gonna be skill specific development. This is the application portion of the snatch grip variation. So the extensor chain we talked about at length, uh, but just to refresh you, that's essentially the lat and erector dominance we'll see in conventional deadlifting. Whereas the screwing in your scaps is the low trap rhomboid and thoracolumbar fascia that we're gonna be training during the snatch grip variation. The reason I like the latter a lot more is that those tissues are gonna be involved in in-range separation, so the horizontal abduction and thoracic rotation, the scapular dig component, and then the scapular ride component. So essentially the upper half component of the throwing motion. So when we're doing a snatch grip deadlift, we're gonna find ourselves essentially able to screw in our shoulders and train that tissue. So we're gonna be able to screw in our shoulders, which is the same uh, training that we're gonna see and the same positioning that we're gonna see when we essentially internally torque our glove arm and externally rotate and essentially get into that uh, scap loaded position. And so that's gonna be trained during the snatch grip. And then from there, we're actually gonna be able to unload those positions. So we're gonna internally torque on the, uh, internally torque on the front arm and we're gonna essentially externally rotate and scap load on the backside. When we do that and open up our chest, then we're actually gonna unload that into landing. And when we unload that, that's why it's so important to train both sides and why I like the snatch grip is that we're essentially training those things to happen and to spiral the energy uh, through our arm. So with all that being said, again, I really like the snatch grip here for the skill specific development and really prioritize it over a more conventional variation. But now what we're gonna do is actually move into the technique portion so that I can kind of teach you the movement and you can give it a try yourself. So as far as the technique involved with snatch grip deadlifting, uh, across all deadlift variations, my first rule of thumb, take your shoes off. The reality is if you're in a plantar flex position to start, you're gonna have a tendency to kind of fall over the bar, or you're gonna actually end up having to squat up the weight uh, because you're not really able to load into your heels. So that's my first rule of thumb. As far as a conventional deadlift position, you know, we're essentially gonna find where the knurling stops or find ourselves in about a shoulder width apart uh, stance. We're gonna have our hands you know, pretty close uh, to the sides of our shin here. We're gonna kind of rock back maintain a flat position. You're not squatting the weight, so you don't have your butt too low. Essentially, maintain a neutral neck, and we're gonna pull. So it's just a hip bench. As far as the differences between a conventional deadlift and a snatch grip deadlift, we're actually gonna widen up our feet. And the reason that I stumbled upon this is essentially I had to clear out from my torso or my abs. So I widened up my feet, and then I had to kind of make up some room for my arms. Uh, with that, Essentially widening up your feet, you're going to have them outside of your hips. You're going to find yourself essentially on either side of the bar. I get myself about one inch uh, from the collar or so. From here, we're going to slightly externally rotate our feet. We're going to push our shins into the bar. We're going to screw our shoulders down. We're going to screw our shoulders down and extend through the thoracic. From there, neutral neck, pull. The reason that I really like the snatch grip deadlift and like I've tried to explain is that essentially that screwed in position is gonna really play up as far as the skill of throwing. 
The reason I say that is that the internal rotation glove torque that you see is essentially here. Well, that's the opposite of what we're training, right? But whenever we unload that, we unload it here. And so we get that torque position with our front scap, our glove arm scap. And on the back end, we're screwing in, so essentially spiraling that energy into your scap load, and then we're unspiraling that into the throwing motion. So it's screwing in, unscrewing. Okay, and I like the snatch grip for training that particularly screwed in position. So I'm gonna show you one from the side just so you can see kind of my torso posture. And like I said, it's gonna be a lot more challenging as far as the overload component. And it's gonna be a little bit challenging on your mobility. So there are some modifications that you can make. One, I mentioned, once your grip starts to fatigue, I really wanna make sure that we're isolating and able to train our spine and we're not having to be limited by our grip strength. So I do like straps for this. So as far as a strap, rip, you're going to see something where essentially you're actually going to be able to screw on a little bit better when you have straps because you're cutting off the grip fatigue or the uh, grip strength portion of the movement. So again, kind of screwing ourselves in, screwing ourselves in here, creating tension, pulling our chest to the bar, neutral neck, pull. And so I like straps for that. Another modification is that if you're limited in mobility, so you can't get the hip flexion component, and you essentially uh, don't have the hamstring weight or something like that, I will go ahead and raise these up on plates. When you raise them up on plates, you essentially allow yourself to have a little bit higher shin, uh, or have the bar a little bit higher on your shin. And from there, when we torque in, we can keep a little bit more vertical posture, essentially screw ourselves in, lift. So I like this for uh, for younger guys or for guys that are having trouble getting into that posture. Uh, I really like uh, kind of raising up the place because again it's about the skill specific, uh, skill specific application. It's not about how much weight you can move. It's about is that weight that you're moving going to actually improve what you're doing on the field. So again I really don't care about uh, having the top number as much as I care about it transferring and you being able to participate in the movement safely. So uh, this is the technique for the snatch grip deadlift and really why I like it as a superior movement to the conventional deadlift. All right guys, I really appreciate you hanging with me through this video. For me, snatch grip is king. You're gonna have to decide that for yourself. So definitely give it a try. Check out the technique portion a few times. Uh, but if you haven't already given me a follow, please do that. And if you haven't left us a like and a subscribe to our channel, uh, definitely do that as well. Thanks again for hanging with me and uh, see you next time.